What would your feeling be if the Yankees were to move? I'd be very annoyed at whoever did it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was Steinbrenner or yeah. whoever it was. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just can't see them moving to Jersey. I think might, you know, and, and it, nothing's going to happen for the next four or five years if it does. Right, and, right. And, uh, I think it's, you know, maybe if they move to Long Island or somewhere else in New York. Yeah, they're talking about the West Side or something. Something like that. Yeah. You know, I, I can't see it, but uh, I know uh, New York doesn't want to lose. I'd be very, very sad. Where do you rate Yankee Stadium in terms of, of its importance to the game of baseball, uh, you know, a historical perspective? Well, you know, it's just got so much tradition. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, the attendance isn't quite what, you know, George would like it to be, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a few things. The, you know, if I, when I go to the game, I park with, with the players park. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the same thing. I'm not, you know, the average fan that has to, you know, find a parking lot. Or right. It's still expensive for the average, you know, wage earner to take his wife and two kids to a game. You know, sure. It's be over a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, the ballpark itself has so much uh, history. And, uh, uh, it's changed a little since I played. I mean, they moved the fences in a little bit in the outfit left field, and they did the stadium over. What's your what's your feeling on on the old ballparks as opposed to I don't know Have you ever been to Camden Yards or No, but I you know I've heard people talk about it. They say it's great. Yeah, yeah. How, that's kind of like how do you feel about that? Do you are you in favor of preserving old parks or do you you know Would you rather see Well, you know the uh, the new parks. You know you look at some of the new parks being built and how successful you know, Toronto and Baltimore, and Colorado. You know they've drawn like three million people. Mm -hmm. So you can't knock it. Yeah. But uh, then you think of the, the Fenway Parks or the Yankee Stadium. And then, you know, as a kid, I remember, or as a younger player, I remember the fun play in Evans Field and Polo Grounds. Mm -hmm. But they're gone, and New York survived without them. But uh, I still wish we had three teams back in yeah, yeah. New York. Does this team remind you of any of the great teams you played on, the character of it or anything? Uh, not I. I don't think so, no. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, when I played, it was fun. You know, a lot of guys from our own organization raised on the farm team. Uh, you know, this one is, you know, you think of uh, Reigns and Field and Strawberry and Good. Uh, Martinez, uh, Duncan, <laughs> you just go around the uh, bugs. You know, we, we, you know, we got a kid like Gene who's great, Rod, he's a catcher another organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bernie Williams is fine from our organization. Right, and right. Paul O'Neill's from Cincinnati. So I, you know, for that reason, I say, you know, I can't really compare it with any Yankee team I played with. Of course, usually, you know, three quarters of our team was made up of, you know, guys that were in our organization. Mm -hmm. But they're an exciting team. I, you know, I go to spring training, I, you know, I know most of them. Mm -hmm. Strawberry wasn't there in spring training when I was there, but Dwight was, and Fred Fielder wasn't there, but uh, a good bunch of guys, they all, you know, look like they're pulling for one another. I think Joe Torrey's done a great job uh, keeping everybody relaxed and trying to keep things calm in the Bronx. Yeah, and that's a hard job sometimes. I'm sorry? That's a hard job sometimes. It is. Yeah. What do you do in spring training with the club? I just work with the young pitchers, mm -hmm. you know, whatever I can do. We have. I mean, we have plenty of pitching coaches down there. We, you know, we have uh, Mel Stottlemyre, the regular pitching coach, and then Tony Cloninger, who's out in the bullpen, but he's, uh, he's also, I'd call, another good pitching coach. And, uh, Billy Connors, who sort of works for the organization now. Uh, and, you know, three or four of us down there. We just, you know, whatever we can do to help for a few weeks. It's not much you can <laughs> show the, you know, the cones. Right, right. But those guys, but we have like 24, 25 pitches, so there's a lot of young fellows here that, you know, we try and give a, what do you call it, a, cr a, cram, a cram course. What's your, uh, what do you think of Pettit? Oh, I think he's great. I, 
you know, I saw him in spring training last year, and I've been really following. Well, I follow the team every mm -hmm. every game, but I uh, mean, he's great. He's, there was a little, you know, little rumor about his elbow, but I think that's you know fine. And uh, he's, you know, he's a workhorse. He never misses a start. He's what we call a gamer. The impression I'm getting from him, you know, really, you know, the, the, you know, just finishing his second season. Does he remind you of yourself at all? Oh no, he nah. throws harder. And <laughs> he's bigger. <laughs> he's about six three. He looks big. I mean, I think he's about six three. I mean, uh, maybe the other way remind me. We he's, a, he's got a good curveball, which I thought I did. Mm -hmm. His control is fine. Uh, got a good fair. You know, he's just got good stuff. Uh, and he's still a kid. You know, he's, he's yeah. Running. But I think the season's really helped him. You know, get a full season under his belt get into playoffs and, and I know he's pitched some tough games this year and he's been great when they do get in a little tailspin he's been lucky enough where he can pitch the next game and get them back on the right track so, so I, I, you know, I like the whole pitching staff I really do mm -hmm. what's your dad doing Bob? he works um, full time at the Nassau County Jail he's a counselor over there oh is he? yeah yeah. yeah. At the, where is that? Mineola? Um, no it's in East Meadow Oh, he's better. Oh, and, oh, okay. Yeah. Is that where the sheriffs work at? Yep, right? that's the place, yeah. Yeah, yeah. friend Bill McAdams is the yeah. uh, work over here in the jail. Mm -hmm. Assistant sheriff or something like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, he's like, he runs a, um, a rehabilitation program over there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, where and he... Where does he live? Uh, he still lives in Levittown, actually. Levittown. Yeah. Where do you live? I live in Wantaud, and um, and but he's training. He trains fighters. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he's got a kid. Uh, he's got a kid named Lonnie Bradley, who's um, right now is the WBO middleweight champ. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he's doing. Lonnie's doing real well, and he's got another kid. He's getting close to uh, a, a, you know a point where he'll fight for the title. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so he he keeps busy between the you know between the two of those things. Yeah. Let me ask you um, just a couple more things. Um, while we were talking about the old ballparks, they say Tiger Stadium, which I think unfortunately we're gonna we're gonna lose that one too. Yeah. It's uh it's known as a hitter's park. What would you do differently to prepare to pitch at Tiger Stadium? I never change no matter where I pitch. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, you know, if your pitch is good, you know the park's not gonna. You know, you just know that you don't want to have too many fly balls hit Fenway Park or mm -hmm. Detroit Stadium. You know, mm -hmm. the wind's blowing out. There's going to be a lot of, you know, wind blown home runs. I was a low ball pitcher anyhow. You know, I, if I pitched high, I'd get killed. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I tried to keep the ball down, my curveball, sinker, slider. So, but, in, you know, parks like that with the wind blowing out, you have to be, you know, very careful, especially Detroit's a great hitter's park. Yeah. I think my first year at the Yankees, we played a game there, and I was just a rookie, and I think... If I'm not mistaken, it was like 11 home runs hit the ball, you know, in a single game between us and Detroit. I said, my God, you know, I just come up for the minor leagues. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you pitch, uh, you know, Atlanta's another, you know, great park to hit in, but you've got guys like Schmaltz and Glavin. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you just, good pitching's going to, you know, overcome that. Mm -hmm. what, was the, what was the place that you least liked to pitch in? throughout your career? Uh, probably, I'd say Boston, but I really shouldn't say that because when Casey Stengel was there, he wouldn't let me pitch there very often. Why is that, because you lefty? Or? He wanted the right hand, it's, you know, Logan, uh, Reynolds and Rashi and whoever else we had then pitch. He'd try and pitch me just before we got to Boston or after we got to Boston, <laughs> but then when uh, Ralph Houck became manager in 61, uh, let me pitch every fourth day, and I, you know, I, I had no problem. I, I mean, I pitched good up there, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I always thought I could pitch, could pitch good up there, but uh, Stengel, you know, had other reasons for not yeah. pitching me there. But, you know, like I said, once Hout got there, I pitched every fourth day, and, you know, just pitch wherever. What's your take on why we have 16 guys this year hitting 40 home runs? and? I can only guess, but I think the ball is juiced up mm -hmm. for one reason. Uh -huh. uh, the the uh, ballpark in Colorado is a joke. Yeah. And, uh, I think they say it's four, four ten or four fifteen at dead center. Mm -hmm. 
I just play golf out there in President Ford's tournament. I play there every year. And I, I, the golf pros have told me that when they get out there and they have a 150-yard shot to the green, right. they take 10% off. In other words, they'll take 15 yards off and they'll play like 135 yards. Really? I don't know if you play golf, Bob. Uh, no, I don't. Know. Because, you know, the altitude, you're up five, six, seven thousand feet. Mm-hmm. So if you take 10%, <laughs> you know, add the same to that, but you take 10% off that dead center field, you know, four, say it's 410, you take 41 yards off that, you know, you're down to 360. And sure, gonna, sure, yeah. The same and right and less. I mean, the balls just jump out of there. Mm-hmm. and uh, They should have realized that when they built the stadium. And, you know, that center should be at least 450 in that yeah. park. Yeah. And so I think they made a big mistake. It's going to it's gonna make a lot of great records, uh, you know. <laughs> you know, they're just going to be demolished eventually. You, know, you see guys like Galarraga and... Uh, Shed Burks, you know, who weren't very successful in other towns they played in. Exactly. You know, I remember Galarag with Montreal, Shed with the Angels, mm-hmm. and Burks with the Red Sox. And, you know, they were good ball players, but you know, they're nothing now. You look in the standings and you see the guys in the top ten, three or four of them were from Colorado and right. batting averages. And and do you think expansion has anything to do with it? Oh, the other thing is, uh, you know, you have 700, 700 ball players. Big leagues now. We yeah. have 400. Yeah, yeah. You get 300 players that, you know, you just look at the earn run averages of some of the guys. It's, you know, it's unbelievable. You know, I looked the other day, that there was like eight pitches in the game, and there's only two of them had an earn run average of less than four and a half. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, um, you know, it's, I'm not saying the players aren't as good or better than we were, but right. it's just that there's a lot of guys that, you know, wouldn't be in the big leagues. 30 years ago. Expansion and now next to uh, 98 is going to be another. There'll be more, right? Another two teams in the league. So mm-hmm. That's about uh, you know, that's a big difference. If you had to pick a moment um, from your career as a player at Yankee Stadium that you would you would say is your finest moment, what would it be? Uh, Bobby, I don't think it's like one game or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, the, you know, the biggest thrill I had in baseball was the first 15 seasons I was with the Yankees from 1950 to 64. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I pitched until 67, but right. the first 15 seasons I was there, we only missed being in the World Series twice in 54 and 59. Wow. Out of 15 years to be in the World Series 13 times, you know, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to me, that was the biggest thrill, just being associated, having that chance to play with DiMaggio and Mantle and Rizzuto's and Ferris and, you know, all the great ball players we've had there. Mm-hmm. And if I had to pick one game, I probably opened a game with the 61 World Series. You know, it's probably the best game I pitched. Or the two shutouts, and, you know, that streak I had with Babe. Yeah, you broke Ruth's record, yeah. 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 Three innings or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't much for records, I really We just didn't talk about records when we were <laughs> Guys like DiMaggio and Henrik and Bauer and Woodley and Hout would, uh, <laughs> they wouldn't stand to some guys started <laughs> saying, well, I want to hit 40 home runs this year and not get 100 runs. Right, right. right. You know, it was all team. You just didn't mention what you wanted to do. And it was it was wins or losses, right? see a little bit of that in baseball nowadays. So, but with the money, you know, we didn't make that much money, so it wasn't a big deal. You had a great year. You I'm only going to get a five or ten thousand dollar raise. Right, right. But now, it, you know, now when you do have a good year, it's, you know, it's millions of dollars to the guy. I think that, you know, I, I think there's a lot of real good pitches in baseball, but uh, I just think the the managers get too much in the habit of when they get to the seventh inning. Yeah. They got the setup setup guy, and you know, I've seen a couple of pitches pitch eight innings, giving up two, three, four hits, look as strong as can be, and just seems automatic the ninth inning uh, the stopper comes in mm-hmm. you know unless you don't have a good stopper but if you do it's, you know you're out of there right, right and I mean I'm talking about good pitches you mm-hmm. know, and, uh, you know I, don't, I don't know what led the league in our complete games this year but I don't I think probably the kid up in Toronto Henkin probably right I think you're right I, I, he might have had eight or ten I'm not sure but he had but, you know that was, uh, I think last year the Yankees had just a couple of uh, complete games. Yeah. And he's fine, I'm not sure. I got lucky, I just got 
call the company and they're gonna let me throw the ball out tomorrow night. Oh, great! Congratulations. The park somehow. So you're doing the first pitch. That's great. Yeah, I don't know who's doing it tonight. Uh -huh. I forgot to ask him. But, uh, uh, very good. I'll, I'll be looking for that then. I had a new shoulder put in last October in my stainless steel shoulder, but I don't know if I can reach home plate tomorrow. <laughs> I have to have a catch for one of the grandkids today and uh -huh. tomorrow and loosen up and see if I can throw it 60 feet. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time out. Say hello to your dad. I will. Bye bye. Bye bye.